Hi guys, Exeter Rider. This week I'm going to be putting in a new USB charging point within my bike itself in the storage compartment. Okay, so let me show you what has been sent through the post. I bought this on Amazon. Uh, I might put a link down below if I can remember what, exactly where I got it from. Uh, but basically it's a, a twin port one. It's rated at 4.2 amps. And what I've done is I've got some speaker cable, which is rated at five amps. And what that's gonna do then is it will show me which one's the live and which one is the negative. All right, so it keeps it simple. I have already crimped on these connectors here. All right, so we've got the positive and the negative there. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but there is a positive that side and a negative on that side there. All right, so we're gonna get the red one and just push it on like so and get the negative and push it on there, like that. Uh, right, I've got to put this in the bike now. Okay, so with this type of USB charging point, it is one which I can mount externally if I wish to. With this little window here, that's gonna be for the voltage indicator, which I'll show you at some point. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire it direct to the battery, um, but I'm also gonna put a switch in somewhere in here I haven't decided where yet this part here is the, the actual inside of my front uh, when I say front for, for people who don't know that's what they call it on the NC 750x the front is the storage compartment where the tank would normally be on most conventional motorcycles but what I got to do I got to punch a hole through here all right so let's get the drill Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this for good measure is I'm gonna put silicone around this outside edge here. You know what these things are like, quite often you put them together and if you don't use any sort of adhesive on it, then it tends to unscrew. Next, I'm gonna put some on the other outside part of it. As I say, this is mainly just to hold it in place and stop it spinning around. I'm gonna feed the nut on. That. Again, just want to seal up the nut with this here on the inner side and on the outside as well. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. And what we're going to do then is just to feed the wire in, and when we take the battery cover off from the inside, we'll be able to pull that through and bring it onto a switch. Just quickly show you what it looks like. All right, and there it is, nice and neat within the Trunk itself, so I'll just pull that up and that'll have the show the voltage on the battery there and two charging points. Brilliant! Alright, let's get the fairing back on. Okay, so that's the fairing back on now. That's quite easy when, when you know how. I have done a separate video for that, so if you want to know how that is done, then I'll put a link up here now. So now we've got to uh, connect the wires from the USB port to firstly a switch then going back to a fuse and then onto the battery terminals. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I do that. Here's a quick sketch, uh, and it is a quick sketch. You can take the mic if you want. So this is the switch. At the top, we've got the positive sign. In the middle, we've got the A, which stands for accessory. So that will be, in this case, a USB charging port. And then at the bottom, we've got the ground, or what I, if, Called, call it a negative or a neutral, whatever you want to call it. All right, um, the reason that we've got a negative here as well is because we've got a neon light here. Um, so we need a, a full circuit going around um, for that light to, to, to operate. Forgive me for the drawing. It probably looks better blurred out, actually. Um, <laughs> so what we've got, we've got the battery here, all right, exhibit A. Um, we've got the positive side of the battery and what we want to do is to go with the, the, the red wire from the uh, speaker cable wire, we want to go up to a fuse. So the idea of the fuse, I've got one of these in this case, there's different sorts available. This is known as an inline fuse, so it goes in one way and then out the other end, all right? And in between that is a fuse. The idea of a fuse, as most of you might know, is to cover yourself for short circuit or overload on an electrical circuit. So, for example, if, if we short circuit, if we would go from uh, the positive to the negative, um, 
if we didn't have a fuse there, then there's a high chance that you can fry your ECU or some other electrical component. It can get very expensive. So what we do there, we put a fuse there. So if we do get a short circuit or the USB um, port actually pulls too much for whatever reason, then this fuse will break the circuit. All right, that's the idea of a fuse. So that's why we do it. Okay, so out of the fuse, we go up to the positive, oops, let's put that there. Go up to the positive side of the switch, all right? In the middle of the switch, we've got the A, stands, which stands for accessory. With a red positive wire again, we come out to the positive side of the USB, which we have actually already put on already, haven't we? So, um, yeah, so we just need to wire that part of it. Now with the negative, or the ground, we come out from there and we go into the USB, all right? And then we need to set another wire coming out from the same negative port. Um, bearing in mind we're using crimps here. We use crimps because if you use the screw connectors then they tend to uh, vibrate loose. So that's why we use these. Um, so from the same connector, we uh, come out, you know, go into there with, with the negative side of the switch um, into there and then we come out again with another one which goes back to the negative negative side of the battery all right so that all might look a little bit a little bit complicated but like i say with any wiring it's much easier if you just break it down so one thing at a time positive to fuse onto the positive side of switch a out to the positive on the usb negative goes to the switch uh, sorry switch and then onto the usb port and then down to the negative on here. Piece of cake when you break it down. All right. right, in most cases, the battery is kept underneath the seat, the rider seat on most bikes. However, on the Honda NC750X, the cover for the battery is in the front itself, which is in behind here. So it's just a couple of screws. This here is the toolkit, if you're wondering. Uh, very, very easy. I've been in here for a long, long time. There you go. So we've got your positive here and the negative over here. These are screw connectors. Sometimes they're on uh, nuts, rarely these days actually. Um, but they're very easy to, to, to uh, disconnect. Again, I think I've already said this, but you didn't you don't need to take the fairing off of this bike to actually mount this USB port. You can actually do it with it on, but it's only because I was doing another video with the, with the fairing that I've uh, that I've done that. So, um, so you can leave this on if you want to just access everything in behind here and drill through this way. All right, just so you know. Um, right, now we've got to put the switch in next. Um, I think that's going to be the next job. Uh, hopefully I've got the wire in here. Yeah, that's the wire that we put in before so that's ready to be split up and uh, put into the different areas that it needs to go we need to mount the switch now or we'll put it in the position which is going to be suitable um, I think we're going to go about here it's an 18 millimeter hole that I need for this it's a bit unforgiving so there isn't much overlap on the on the outside of the switch there so Okay, so this is where we are at the moment. We've got the USB there. We want the positive to go to the A on the uh, or the accessory side of this switch. All right, and poke it through the hole. So that, like I say, this is the switch live as it's known. We'll try and feed that through the hole like so, and this will go to the A on the switch live. We want a crimper, but before we do that, we want a little small smidgen of heat shrink. Heat shrink is great stuff. We don't, it's not absolutely essential that you use this stuff. It does make a better job of it. I'm gonna fit on after. Yeah, lovely. There we go, that's solid as a rock. I'm gonna put this uh, heat shrink on now. As I say, you don't really need to do this, but it is just a better job. All 
right, so as I say, that goes straight to the middle. Middle one there. That's on nice and tight. Right, let's do the uh, negative next, I think. So with the negative, we want to come through the hole again. Again, remember at the moment, this negative wire does go back to the USB at the moment. USB port, so we'll want to join a piece here onto this switch here. So we'll cut the wire about here. There we go, right, this can now go onto the negative side of the switch. Which is that one. Like so, nice and tight. All right, and then we get the, the other end of this twin here, twin wire set up. We'll poke it through there. Like so. That's ready to connect straight to the negative on the battery now. Now all we need is a positive wire. Okay, so next I need to put this fuse carrier in. We're going to go from the live from the switch all the way back um, to the fuse carrier here. And then that will then go on to the live side of the battery. All right, so I want to keep this quite neat here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this somewhere here with some zip ties, uh, cable ties, whatever you want to call it. Um, so it all becomes part of this loom then, effectively. Um, so what I need to do is if I pass this, how much wire have we got there? It's going to be quite a lot there. So we're just going to snip this off to make it a little bit shorter. Like so, strip that off there. Same again, I'm going to crimp this together. Another connector. Okay, so we're going to go up through here. I'm hoping I've captured this in a, uh, an obvious type of uh, kind of manner for you to understand. Again, when you look at all those wires there, you think, wow, that's a, a lot of wires. Where do you start with that? But when you break it down, it's really not too bad. Right, that's that tied in nicely. Not really, really tight. You want it to have a bit of flex in there, but... Um... All right, now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated for me because I don't, when well, I'm locked down at the moment, I don't have the materials or the ring connectors to connect to this, but what I'd normally do is I'll get a ring connector and um, crimp on the end of this one and uh, connect the, the battery terminals together. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't do that because we're on lockdown. I haven't got the parts for it. Um, so what I'm going to do for now is just for the sake of the video, I'm just going to connect these anyway. All right, just unscrew it and uh, and then put it onto the battery terminals so we, we can see what it's going to going to look like. All right. As with any uh, battery, you, you generally, unless the, the manufacturer's instructions say different. You, Oops, you always go for the negative first. All right, always disconnect the negative first. So what I normally do is I would get a ring connector, crimp it on the end of the negative, just put it onto there, and it's not gonna go anywhere then, and then put it back in, but can't do that on this particular video. So we'll just um, do what we can. In fact, I don't even think I need a ring connector really. I think that'd be uh, sufficient. Just twist it around the battery terminal. Let's get the uh, positive undone first. I can actually split this up a bit and uh, put it, it's hard to show you with the camera, but I can actually tuck this in behind and then the clamp will actually clamp these wires together. What I can actually do here, actually, is I can put a small loop on these here and tuck it in behind the clamp of the actual uh, terminal there. And I think I probably won't even need a ring connector, which would be even better. Um, cut a bit more off of there. Is that going to be enough? Yeah, that'll be enough. That should be fine. And we'll 
going behind. Let's connect it. I think I should tie that up. Let's try it first. So that should be. Look at that. I can't see it from here. Let's go around the other side. You can probably see what more than what I can see. Yes, look at that. Okay, so we've got the neon light on the switch. We've got the voltage down there as well, reading at 12.3. So, uh, yeah, jobs are good at. The main reason I wanted this, actually, was for the voltage indicator. And it means that over the winter period, um, I don't have a battery op optimizer, but it just means that I can keep an eye on the voltage. So if, if the voltage goes down to, let's say, I don't know, 10.5, 11 volts, and I know that my battery needs some servicing uh, or even replace the battery. But with this, I can keep an eye on it and just check, you know, I've got a good benchmark now. I know it's at 12.3, so I can just remember that and come in, in, in every now and then just to check it. So um, yeah, that's, that's probably 80% of the reason I got it. And obviously it's nice having the USB port as well for charging my phone. Um, and things like that. So let's get this panel back on now. And that's all secure and neat job that, it's pretty good. I say I normally put a ring connector on these here, but I don't really think I need to actually. It's It's got a good clamp on it, so why add another join? There's no need to. Let's leave that as is. Okay, two screws. Okay, so hopefully that's been of service to you. Now, to do this job, was I, I use very simple tools. Basically, I've got a, a crimper, a wire stripper and wire cutter. You can actually buy these combined. You can get a DIY tool, it's kind of a DIY tool, where these are combined um, and they're like seven or eight pounds. It's, it don't co cost a lot of money. Um, so that's that a posi drive screwdriver for the battery terminals and getting the cover off. Some nylon ties, an assorted bag of crimps as well is, uh, you can buy, normally buy these in a pack and you get, an, uh, you know, all different sizes. Um, the USB port itself, um, it, you can all, all be done for under 20 pounds. It doesn't cost a lot and hopefully I've broken it down now for you to so you can see how easy it actually is if you do it step by step and break down the, the, the wiring side of it. It is actually quite easy. Always remember to take the negative side off of the battery first and then the positive. Uh, that's the important one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite a it's, it's a simple job. You know, it's it's a good one to, to kind of start with, really. Um, obviously, I needed the the tools as well the drill and things so um but yeah hopefully that has been of service to you um thank you very much for watching and getting this far in the video much appreciated and um yeah i guess i was just say if you could give it a like that'd be much appreciated and i will see you next week thank you very much for watching <laughs>